Hello everyone, this is Angela from Recycled Cottage and Garden and today I'm going to show you the next step in making a journal from scratch. And this one is going to have to do with poking your holes and sewing in your signatures. Um, if this cuts off early, I will restart and do a second part. I'm not sure why it did that last time, it just kind of cut off in the middle. Anyway, um, I have the cover done. I have my signatures built. I'm doing three in this one. And I have a strip of end paper from this particular book, so I know it's exactly the right size, um, in order to make a template for punching holes. So what I'm going to do with this one, it's one and a quarter inches wide. So since I'm going to do three... Um, I'm going to make three lines, vertical lines here, and then we'll do cross lines on it. Uh, hopefully this part won't be too boring. So I'm going to make one in the middle and let's see. There we go. One in the middle and two on the sides. You can place them out however you want. Since this is a more like a scrapbook type journal, I want to leave more space between them because people will glue in or paste in or whatever their own items. And you need to have plenty of space for those pages to expand. So there's my three measurements. And everybody does this a little bit differently. This is just how I do it. It makes sense for me. So I draw my lines. They don't have to be exactly perfect, but you know, the straighter you are, the better it looks. Okay. Now I need to do I'm going to do, I like doing the five holes rather than three. It gives it a lot more stability in my opinion. A lot of people just do three. That's perfectly fine. You can do it however you want. Okay, this is nine and three eighths. Let me see. Let me go. I'm going to come in, I think I'm going to come in three quarters. So I'm going to start that way. So I'm going to come in three quarters of an inch. Sorry, I can't see for the glare on this. Okay. So there's how much I'm going to come in from the edge. And this one I'm going to do three quarters. Okay, and we're not quite eight inches, so we'll be, I've got it centered, and I'm going to do four inches and two inches. Two, four, six. Okay, same on here. I've got a bunch of templates already made up, but just to show you, um, we're going to go ahead and do this one from scratch. And then I just draw my horizontal lines one side to the other. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. Um, if you've ever watched Dawn at Let's Make a Mess Today, she doesn't really measure anything. But since I'm going to be making this to sell and... I'm a little more OCD about it, I guess. Um, that's what I do. I measure them out. If I was just doing something quick and fun for myself, I probably wouldn't care. Okay, next step. I use a piece of uh, doubled up cardboard. Used part of an old box. Oops, my nose out of the way. And I take my 
cover and I open it up outside up. Oops. Put this on top of it. And if you do not have one of these, this is a book binding awl. It's different than, say, like a carpenter's awl. It's a lot narrower. You can see it. It's a whole lot narrower. Um, and this is what you're going to want. I got this one off of eBay or Amazon. Probably eBay because they're usually cheaper. Um, they don't charge as much shipping over there. And uh, I think I paid all of like 2 to two fifty for it. Something like that. So they're really cheap. I have used a big darning needle before. I have used a big darning needle provided it has a sharp point. This one doesn't. But if it does have a sharp point, you can use that. This is just a whole lot easier on your hands. Okay, so I want to center this template on my spine. And then I'm just going to poke the holes. Sometimes I have a lot more signatures usually i don't more do more than four to five but i have had somewhere i've done six because the the book was that thick and you had to poke all the way through like i say i like the five hole stitch rather than the three hole. Okay, we'll hang on to that because we'll need it in a minute. Next step is if you hold this up to the light, no, you probably can't see it there. Okay, let's see. You can see it makes these little, it pushes the paper up. Don't worry about it. You won't see it when it's done. What I do like to do after I punch through is I go back through each hole with the awl to make that hole nice, good sized, and uh, make sure it's clear all the way through. Do not step, uh, skip this step, no matter what you use to poke your hole, because it will make your life ever so much easier when you're sewing those signatures in. It's sewing signatures in is rather fiddly work because the papers want to flop over and after you've got one signature in it gets a little more fiddly because you're dealing with the other signature that wants to flop over in way. Once you've got that done, then you take your signatures and I'll just do one to show you. I've got all my papers lined up. Um, I do have some shorter ones in here. I've got that one with the spider web. I okay. Most of these were the right size. A few are a little bit shorter. It's not a huge issue, but I do like to get the shorter ones kind of centered um, so that okay. Okay. Spider web one's not in this. I only had two little pieces of that spider web. Uh, paper. Uh, so I put one piece in each one of these. If I ever find any more, I'll get some. That came to me as a gift from somebody. I don't remember who. Some kind of fabric sw fa uh, paper swap thing. Um, okay. Now what I do with this is I center it from the top to the bottom. So it's centered. And then I just make a little mark where those holes should be so they're all line up properly okay and then i take the all and this is gonna be a little difficult for you to see because i'm not left-handed and my camera is over on that side or actually I should say the chromebook is um and you're gonna poke i always start in the middle i don't really know why and you kind of bend your paper over and you're gonna poke all the way through you can see that I've poked all the way through and this is how I normally hold it so that I've got a good grip on it so let me just do the rest of these holding on to it that way your papers don't shift 
Some people clip them. Um, I've tried that. I find the clips just want to come loose or they want to mark up the paper and I don't like that. So there's the holes in it ready to go. And you just, you don't want to move your stuff around too much or they won't line up. Um, okay, next thing is you're going to need some thread of some sort or cord of some sort to uh, sew them in. I am going to be beading this one so you get to see that as well. And so I'm using embroidery thread. This is the six strand embroidery thread. I have a bunch that didn't have labels that I got in a bag full at the thrift store. So I'm tending to use that. These are pretty th uh, pretty strong. So you want to measure three times the length of your book. And then I add, oh, about another three or four inches just for good measure. Okay. Now, with doing the beading on this so that I can use a smaller needle that the beads will fit over. Because I can't use my darning needle, which is what I normally will use. If I'm beading these, then I want... I need a thinner needle, and that means it's going to have a smaller eye. Yes. A beading needle is, I wouldn't trust it to be strong enough to deal with this. Um, I've used beading needles when I'm sewing on fabric. Get all of your, so I split this in half, basically. Oops, you know what I did? I only did three times. If I'm going to split it in half and fold it over, i got to have it six times. We'll use that on something else. One, two, three, four, five, six, and a little extra. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. I wasn't thinking ahead. I tried to, but it doesn't always work. Okay, so we're going to split it in half into three strands each half. As I was saying, you have to have a needle thin enough, strong, but thin enough that you can fit a bead over it. Um, little things like seed beads are usually not going to work. Uh, you're you're going to have a hard time finding a needle that is small enough with the th that with the thread it will actually fit through a seed bead. Um, and as well, it's got to fit over two or two, um, six strands of embroidery floss. It's not hard, it's a little tedious, but it turns out so pretty. And I want to do very, very colorful on this, even though the uh, cover on this one has a lot of print pattern on it. Um, I just felt like the beads were a good option on this. And you don't have to do beads on them. I've, I have plenty that don't have. I like the look of it. One thing you do want to use is... Um, oops. Make sure I get rid of this. Oh, there we go. No knots. No knots. Okay. Now that I have this, and straighten out most of the crinkles there, most of them. I'm going to take my small needle. I may switch glasses. I need stronger, stronger glasses for this, for close-up work. And I thread a needle the way my grandmother taught me. And sometimes with this, this much thread going through it, it doesn't... I like it a whole lot. Basically what I do is I wet the end of it, squish it between my fingers, and shove the uh, needle eye over top of it. And most of the time, I'd say 99% of the time it goes right in. And that's how I thread a needle. Nana taught me that many years ago. She's the one who taught me to embroider. I was four, and she gave me some pre-printed cross-stitch stuff to play with one day. 
and that's began my crafting and well maybe didn't begin it but it sure put it on its way and embroidery is like my first love that's my that's my go-to craft okay now um this is in the front so um, that's my front of my book this is going to be the first signature so i take the book take this signature and i open the signature up I don't know how well you're going to be able to see what I'm doing, but I'll do my best to show you. Okay. So we're going to put our needle through the center hole with a five. Well, I think with threes as well. Um, and I moved this a little bit. It's not lining up. There we go. You just want to go all the way through. your. If you haven't messed around and moved it around like I did, you'll go straight through. Then you go to your very first hole, a hole closest to the front, if that's where you're starting, and you push it through. And pull your thread out. Now, there's my tail over here. I leave a little bit, that's why I cut it longer, I leave a little bit extra of a tail over here. I'd rather have too much than not enough. Okay, now since I am going to bead it, I need to go ahead and get some beads out. And I've got a bunch that are slightly larger. They're a type of seed bead, but they're a large seed bead. Oops, let me put some in there. It's dark enough for you to see. Hopefully you can see those. Anyway, they've got a little bit bigger of a hole. Some seed beads will fit through all this, but I don't want to fiddle part around with 